This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about basic translations of functions. Um, in the first section, we're going to talk about the rules of translations. In the next section, we're going to talk about uh, the translations of the quadratic. In the next section, section 3, we'll talk about absolute value. Then we'll talk about uh, x cubed in our fourth section. And then we'll even talk about the uh, exponential function uh, in our last section, section 5. All right, let's get started. All right, in this first section, we're going to talk about some basic rules when it comes to translations. There's just a few. We're just going to look at three of them just the basic translations. So um, let's say we took a function and remember function notation we say f of x is really equal to y. So let's say we start off with some function. If we were to take that function and change it, like let's say if we add some constant k, so we add some constant k to our function, what is going to be the effect on the graph? Well, it turns out that the function will move k units vertically. All right, so that means if k is positive, it'll move up k units. If it's k is negative, it'll move down k units. All right, so let's say, what if we took the function and we replaced the x with x minus h? Okay, so we put a little minus h there. What is the effect in the graph? Well, this is actually going to move the graph h units horizontally. Okay, so if h is positive, well, okay, if we're subtracting, like let's say it's eight, uh, x minus 3, it's going to move 3 units to the right. If it's... Uh, if this is x plus 1, it's going to move 1 unit to the left, always being the opposite. That's why I'm using h and not negative h. Yeah, we'll show examples in a moment. All right, and then, then our last uh, rule is that what if we were to multiply the function by some value a? Well, it turns out there's actually three scenarios that I can imagine with this uh, situation, is that if a is greater than 1. Okay, so if a is, let's try to do that a little bit more neatly. So if a is greater than 1, I know what's going to happen. It's going to stretch this thing vertically. So there's going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, what happens when a is between, let's say, 0 and 1? If a is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a vertical shrink. In other words, things are going to get closer to the x-axis when you shrink. When you stretch, things are going to get farther away vertically from the x-axis. Okay, then what happens when a is negative? Now, just I'm just saying when it's less than 0, we still have this stretch factor. But when a is less than 0, I could tell you that it's going to flip or it's going to reflect. It's going to reflect the curve over the x-axis. It's going to basically flip it right over the x-axis. All right, now, this is kind of in general. You can see some rules here. Now let's put it into practice. All right, we have a video on parent functions, and one of our parent functions is the quadratic, and that would be y equals x squared. Now, uh, you should know this. If you're any kind of math student, you should know what a quadratic function looks like. It just looks like a u. It's got this u shape. Okay, so, and of course it goes through the origin. This is a very bad picture, but it's a U-shape, the lowest point being, of course, the origin. All right, well, let's place a few translations together and see what the effects are on the graph. All right, let's say I have an X minus 2 inside the parentheses, right? Instead of just X squared, it's X minus 2 squared. So what's going to happen to the curve? Okay, so instead of, you know, 
that lowest point there being right at the origin like it is right now, it's going to move it two units right. Okay, and it's still going to have the same U shape. Okay, exact same U shape except now that vertex is at two zero. Okay, all right, well what happens if we try something else? Let's say we do a couple things. Let's say we have a negative by the x squared and we got a minus three. What's the effect on the graph? Okay, well, there's a few things that are gonna happen. Actually, two things. So, if it's x squared, it smiles, right? But when I put a minus there, see how the number in front of the square term is negative? It's actually a negative one. It's gonna flip the whole thing over the x-axis. So, picture this sm or, uh, frowning, this frowning looking parabola. And I'm gonna move it three units down. Okay, so numbers on the outside, not on the inside of parentheses, but on the outside, move it vertically. And since it's negative, it's moving it down. Okay, so it's going to still have the same U shape, except now it's pointing down. Okay, so there's two translations we did with that problem. Okay, let's try another. Okay, let's try if we put a minus, and we put an X plus one, in parentheses and a minus one on the outside. Okay, what happens? I got three things going on here. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to flip my parabola over the x-axis. Okay, so instead of it smiling, now it's gonna be frowning. So picture it frowning, except now instead of our vertex being at zero, zero, I'm gonna move it one unit to the left and one unit down. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, when it's on the inside, you do the opposite. You don't go one right, you go one left. Okay, so let's move on to our next, which is of course, the absolute value. All right, so our next family, or I should say parent function, let's try the absolute value of x. So again, you should know what these basic shapes look like, and it is a V-shape. Absolute value always has the V-shape. All right, so let's do a few things. Uh, I'm just going to do two on this one. So let's say we do uh, minus x plus 1 on the inside and a plus 1 on the outside. Okay, so let's say I wanted to figure out what this graph looked like. I don't need to pick up a graphing calculator. I just know by translations what's going to happen here. Okay, that minus is going to flip it. So instead of it going up, it's going to be going down as a V. Okay, okay, and it's still going to go through the origin, being that vertex. Okay, so it's still at the origin, but now it's upside down. I'm going to move it one unit left and one unit up. So I still have a V, except now the V, oops, try that a little bit neater. Except now the V is looking like that. Okay, so we, there you go. So now my vertex is at one, negative one, one. Okay, let's try another one. So let's say we have absolute value, x minus one, and we got a plus two on the outside. Okay, just running through a few examples to get you comfortable with this. Okay. All right, I have no negative, so it's still going to be a V. It's going to be a V shape. I'm going to move it one unit to the right and two units up. Notice how when it's inside the uh, parentheses, or in this case the absolute value, you do the opposite. And so instead of moving one left, like you'd normally think, I move it right. Okay, and so there is my V shape. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's go on to cube. All right, so for our next one, we're going to do a cubic. Cubics are interesting because they're unbounded on the domain and the range. Okay, so cubics look like this, and they go through the origin. It's an inflection point, if you know anything about calculus. But anyway, we've got a point right there. It's kind of the, it goes through that origin, does that little, almost looks like a parabola going down on the left side, and a parabola going up on the right side. It's not but it kind of resembles that shape. Okay, so let's try a few different examples. So like, let's say if I took uh, x 
uh, minus 2 cubed minus 1 okay so there's really not that many ways I could really get creative with this okay but I'm gonna take the same exact shape I'm gonna move it two units to the right and one unit down okay two units to the right because of this I'm doing the opposite inside the parentheses going right to not left to and I'm going down one because uh, cause of that number is on the outside and you don't do the opposite you just do you go down all right so eventually uh, it's still gonna have that same shape okay kind of hard to draw like that not used to doing it when I'm not on the center of the plane but anyway it has that same shape except it's that inflection point which it's called is going to be at 2 negative 1 okay let's go to one more let's try one more let's put a minus in front of this let's make it x uh, I don't know plus 1 cubed okay so what does this look like alright well picture now because of the minus sign then I'm going to flip it over the x-axis so that means the right branch is now going down and the left branch is going up okay so we have that kind of all right but now instead of the inflection point being at the origin it's going to be one left okay so one left so this branch is going down and the other branch is going up it's just the reverse the vertical reverse of this okay one last curve let's go on to exponential all right so let's take a look at our last looking curve and this is probably by far the most interesting because it's exponential now you could use any base we want I'm using E base E but you could use base 2 base 5 it doesn't matter any positive value will work here except especially if it's a positive value greater than 1 um, it's going to have this shape where you're gonna see this curve and it goes and then it takes off okay so it hugs the x-axis because there's asymptote so picture an asymptote being right here the asymptote y equals zero and it always is going to go through this point right there which is zero one okay so this is what the base curve for a exponential curve looks like no matter what your base is as long as the base is greater than one it's going to look this way all right so what happens now if we do some changes like for instance I thought of uh, all right what if I put e to the x plus 2 plus 3 on the outside okay so what happens to this curve so picture this whole curve moving to okay it's, it's right by the x so that means I'm gonna do the opposite so instead of moving it to right I'm gonna move it to left so I'm gonna move this point two units to the left I'm also going to move the whole thing up so that means the asymptote is gonna move up with it alright so picture what that's gonna look like all right, so here I got the y-axis. Now I got my x-axis. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move up the asymptote to over here. Okay, here's the new asymptote at y equals three. I moved everything up, right? Okay, so uh, also now we're moving the curve two units to the left. One, two. Okay, so now I know the curve is going to do the shape now remember we were at zero one before right that special point right there was at zero one but if I move it to left okay we're at negative two and I move it three up so I'm gonna be at four so that's negative two four if you follow along right there okay so my new point on the graph is right there so what's happening so I know it's gonna do this it's hugging the x-axis there and then eventually comes up and whoosh, and does that whoosh it looks like a giant slide okay but it goes up forever all right that's what it looks like it's kind of a complicated shape kind of hard to draw that quickly all right let's try one more let's say if I put a negative e to the x plus one all right now this one's a little bit more complicated I didn't leave much room but I'll put this in here anyway okay that's a plus one that's my y-axis there kind of creeping into my equation okay but uh, you could see what's going on here if I do this very carefully well the minus means it's going to flip over the x-axis so instead of it going whoosh up it's gonna go whoosh down okay so picture it just whooshing down like that and we're gonna move it one unit up okay so all right what does that mean okay so I'm flipping it over 
So instead of this point being at 0, 1, it's going to be at 0, negative 1. But then I'm going to land up moving the point all up 1. So it's going to be like that. So instead of my uh, asymptote going to be at y equals 0, I flipped it over. It was still at y equals 0, but then I lifted everything up 1. So now the asymptote is going to be at y equal 1. Oops, I don't know if you can see that. You know, let me try that again. So it's uh, y equal 1 is where the asymptote is. And it's going to be going down. Okay, so uh, let's see. Where was it? So it's there, there. Okay, so now it's going to hug the, x or hug the asymptote. And it goes through that point and whoosh. And it goes down forever. Okay, so it's going right and down forever. Okay, kind of the mirror image moved up from this. Okay, there you have it. Translations. Go back to Math Guide, check out our text-based lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Take care.